Greetings, Series 24, Series 57 test takers. This is Dean Tenney coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas. We have been adding some smaller carve outs of testable issues on 24 and 27. Uh, the last was, uh, I think, about 15 minutes on uh, limit order protection. And today I'm uh, just going to add some more content. And today we'll be talking about locked and crossed markets, locked and crossed markets. And uh, this shouldn't take us too long. I mean, uh, um, boom, there we go. Okay, so let's just uh, look at this exhibit. We like exhibits because in an exhibit question like this, there's a lot going on. And uh, here we're looking at, uh, we must have at least, if we can see the screen here, we must at least have a level two NASDAQ data feed. Because a level two NASDAQ data feed shows us the market makers and their quotes. And as you can see here, we can see that uh, Morgan Stanley, that's their MPID, is willing to buy into their inventory, a thousand shares, 10 round lots, as you see over there, that's the size at 15 and sell a thousand shares at uh, 15.15. Now, if you are coming from the package product part of our securities industry, it means mutual funds primarily, uh, you might want to take the time every time you see this to just put, you know, what this is. This is the market maker buys at the bid and the market maker sells at the ask. I'm buying these, uh, the stock into my inventory. I'm selling the stock out of my inventory. Now, where people struggle on trading is when they don't have a handle on this quote and from whose perspective. Uh, I'm going to do another lecture. I'm going to call it Know Your Bid and Your Ask. <laughs> right? So uh, that is uh, Something you'd really got to get a handle on. Okay, so we got Morgan Stanley there. We got Goldman Sachs at 1502, uh, 1516, eight by nine. Again, that means Goldman Sachs is willing to buy 800 shares in inventory at 1502. They're willing to sell 900 shares. Those are round lots at 1516. We got Merrill Lynch. That's uh, Merrill Lynch willing to buy 700 shares at 1503 into inventory and uh, sell 700 shares out of inventory. In fact, uh, who knows? Maybe I want to. Uh, take the time to actually do that. You know what I mean? But that is maybe I want to put into inventory. I'm just thinking what we can add here. So market makers buys into inventory and market maker sells out of inventory. And that's the spread. You know, not like on my smartphone, I don't actually need to see the market makers and their quotes. And so if right now we were looking at uh, the end, uh, had a level one NASDAQ data feed, it's kind of like what's on my, my phone. We would see the highest bid, very testable, highest bid, which here is 1503. And we'd see the lowest ask, which in this case is uh, 1515. And then we'd have the size there as well. So that's going to be what we call the inside ask or inside market, or it's also known as the inside quote. And then I'm going to have what size is available here. And the size is going to be seven round lots. I'm going to get a different font here. That's going to be on the size, uh, seven available on the bid, and a thousand shares on the ask. So that's what the uh, the one NASDAQ data feeds it a look. So now I am uh, contemplating joining these uh, market makers on the screen here, the display. And let's say that my uh, MPID, my MPID is uh, Newport Securities. Newport Securities is a market making firm I first started with back in the day. And yeah, let's get a bigger font there. And there's Newport, I'm getting ready to uh, put in a quote. Now it's up to uh, Newport, whoever the market maker is that is contemplating changing their quote, it is up to them to make sure they don't walk across the market. A lock, as you see here, is when the uh, highest bid equals the lowest ask. So I will have locked the market if uh, I'm the 57 in Newport and I put this in. 
that would lock the market. And I'm not allowed to do that. So I could go to, uh, let me just get rid of that. I could go to uh, 1514 if I chose to. Uh, by the way, the market makers aren't supposed to beat me up. So there should be very testable, no collusion. So Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, Merrill can't call me and say, Dean, what are you doing? Taking all the juice out of the stock. You narrowed the spread from, uh, you know, to a penny. You know, don't you get it? It's a rotating rotation. Uh, Morgan Stanley takes the lead uh, price on Monday, Tuesday. Merrill Lynch, or Tuesday's Goldman, Merrill's Wednesday. So very testable. These market makers aren't supposed to collude. And you can't berate other market makers for putting in quotes to do that. Now, if I want to go to 15, 15 or higher, what I'm going to do is call Morgan Stanley and I'm going to say to Morgan Stanley, trade or move. It's not testable, but that's what I'm supposed to do. Now, I'd be really foolish. I'd be really foolish if I did this. You know, I, in other words, Morgan Stanley is willing to sell a uh, thousand shares at 15, 15. And I put in 1520. Now, I always joke this is a cross. The highest bid now is greater than the lowest ask. And, you know, outside of the Series 2457 Fantasy Land, this isn't a problem because Morgan Stanley is going to immediately say, well, you must be a new deal. Why would you want to pay 1520 when you can buy a thousand shares from me at 1515? And the real world might, you know, you know, I'd get hit here pretty, pretty hard. So you'd learn this one way or the other, the hard way, so to speak. Anyways, let's just put in a quote that does work. I could put in here, for example, uh, 1505. And uh, maybe I put over on my ass side, uh, 1510. And uh, I always have to be uh, willing to do at least 100 years. That's testable. And maybe I say I'll do 1,000 either side. I gotta be able, oh, gotta be able to let it look so well. Let me get rid of that. 10 by 10. And uh, please note, uh, test takers, that would change the inside quote, right? The inside quote would now change because this is no longer gonna be the inside quote. Uh, based on what I just did there now, the inside quote is in 1505. By the way, I. Uh, not testable, we don't need the axe now in the stock because I've got the uh, best on both sides, right? 1505, 1510, 10 by 10. Okay, so that's how locked and cross markets, locked and cross markets. Uh, let's just review. It's the market makers in the quote that got to make sure they don't do this uh, incorrectly. And I gave you an example here of uh, Newport coming into this marketplace with their MPID, their level three machine, which allows the input. Level one, very testable, shows you the market makers. Uh, level, excuse me, level one shows you the inside quote, level two shows you the market makers, and level three lets you play. So Newport's coming in here, and we're saying that Newport can't put in a quote that would lock the market, that would be a lock, or that would cross the market, which in this case would be, well, I'll just do it from the get-go. And we said that would be where I put in All right, so uh, let's uh, perform let's do a performance opportunity. Let's do a performance opportunity. Whoop. Let me clean up my slide. Okay, so here's a practice question for us. Uh, when the inside market is 23, 23, 25, so what I highly recommend you do is above these things, okay, you know, what Dean thinks you should do is not testable, but, you know, I would want you to try and get as comfortable as you can uh, with what's going on here. This is the highest bid. You change colors. All right, and this is the lowest ask. That's what the inside market is, also known as the inside quote. That is very testable. 
And so now what I like to do is I, I like to kind of make my own exhibit on these kind of questions. And the, I like to do what the question says and look at the results. So now they're saying I'm gonna put in a quote at 2250, uh, 23. And as a result of that, it looks like I have a bid at 23.15 that is higher than the lowest ask. And so that is a cross mark. Okay, so I hope you found that helpful. Uh, we have been fortunate enough to be at 350,000 views in our short 14 months YouTube channel history. We're closing in on 5,000 subscribers. Uh, please refer your SIE folks. The SIE playlist content is chock full. I don't think there's anything more that we're always adding, but there's enough there. Series seven, we have five separate playlists for seven series seven. Uh, we got a 66 playlist is pretty full, 65. All that to say we're now building out the content for some of the uh, uh, more limited registrations like nines, tens, fours, you know, 24s, 57s. And so you can look forward to uh, more content. The next 24 content I'll be adding uh, is a collaboration we do with Test Geek, Exam Prep LLC. And we're gonna be going over uh, some teaching tools Brian has, uh, that'll be our next installment. Uh, if you uh, got something out, smash the like button, uh, put in the comment box any lecture you'd like me to add to the playlist, and I'll see you for the next installment.